Uh, okay, so um, I am Piotr's co-host, Rose Gregorio. So I am from EIT Urban Mobility. Um, we are a, a European funded institution that works to improve urban mobility in Europe. Um, so I am the communication and dissemination officer of an EIT urban mobility project uh, called Batteryverse. We are one of the, the many partners of Batteryverse. And yeah, and I'm here to basically help Piotr and show everybody how um, the Batteryverse uh, community looks like and how it works, so. Thanks, uh, thanks Rose. Uh, my name is Piotr Krutin. I'm originally from Poland, but right now I'm based in Barcelona in Spain. Uh, I work as an innovation consultant for Baxin Company in the team uh, focusing on, um, on battery circularity. And I myself, I'm, I'm uh, quite an enthusiast of everything that happens at the end of life of the batteries. Uh, I, I watch many dismantling videos <laughs> um, in the, on YouTube, uh, so I, I learned through that quite a lot, and of course uh, through interviews with with our uh, partners and in industrial companies. And I hope uh, that the information I will share with you today will be also interesting for you. And let me just go into it quickly. Um, first of all, what are the reverse logistics of of EV batteries? Um, the reverse logistics uh, is basically everything that happens between the end of first life of the battery and the battery production and the repurposing and recycling. So actually, uh, you know, some people think that it's, it's just, okay, transportation of the battery, you put it on the truck and then you, you transport it either to recycling or in some cases to repurposing, but there is quite many. There are quite many more processes uh, between. Um, you have to discharge the battery, sometimes two times as a pack as, and as a module. Uh, you have to assess the state of charge, the state of health, to decide what to do with the battery. Uh, you have to provide the proper packaging, depending on the state of safety of the battery and transport it properly. Um, then. Uh, you have to dismantle it, so open the pack, take the modules and reuse them or do whatever else. Um, you have to arrange some uh, contractual agreements um, and also administration, um, administration agreements. Uh, and in the end, there is quite a lot of data in the process. So you can see that it's not only transportation, but actually quite, quite a lot of things. And in these many processes, there are challenges. Uh, the discharge process can be quite time consuming. And especially if you don't have information from the OEM, how to communicate with the BMS, uh, it takes time to uh, identify the discharge properties. Then for the state, state of X assessment, um, it's not really harmonized. So the state of health uh, assessment may differ for various uh, brands. Uh, so it's it's also a challenge. Then for packaging and transportation, um, the transportation itself is quite costly and the thermal runaway event is very difficult to uh, identify early on. In the dismantling and sorting, it's a very labor intensive process uh, because many of the joints are difficult to Autom automatize uh, in dismantling. Um, in the admin arrangements and the business agreements, um, quite many companies right now have problems with the new battery regulation because some provisions are pretty vague. And also the market for second life batteries is quite illiquid, which is another challenge to really assess uh, what's the value of a second life battery. And we have also seen that among in the data management, there is it's it's quite uh, limited because many of the data is a secret, an industrial secret. That's why the many battery project, the battery passport projects are struggling to actually make uh, companies to share the data. 
And on top of that, uh, we know that there are many more batteries uh, coming, uh, reaching the end of life together with the battery scraps. Uh, there are two uh, main, um, let's say supply, uh, there are two main feedstocks of end of life batteries. One is uh, the production scrap, uh, which comes from both uh, battery manufacturers and EV manufacturers. And increasingly often, the batteries are also naturally reaching their end of life in the older vehicles. So in 2020, there will be uh, more than 170,000 of tons um, to be collected, which is quite a lot of batteries. So combining this with the challenges, there is a quite a, a big need for improvements. And uh, the, the project that we are representing with ROSE is called uh, Batteryverse Project. It's a European, European funded project and it has quite many partners. Uh, it's going to last three and a half years uh, with a budget of 5 million euros. And together with partners like uh, Skoda, uh, Renault, uh, Tesan, which is a recycler, and um, research partners like CEA, which is the coordinator of our project, we are planning to work on the challenges I, I presented to you before uh, to help uh, increase the efficiency of those processes. Here today, uh, we'll be sharing with you some uh, insights on the battery circularity business models, because I'm in this project responsible for analyzing those together with my team from Baxen Company, while Rose uh, is the leader of the communication dissemination activities, and uh, she will give you a glimpse of the uh, battery community that we're bu building around this circularity issues. Just before I jump into um, explaining a bit who is who, I will show you what we're specifically working on in the project. So on the first contact um, in the workshop, we are working on a universal battery discharge process with energy recovery and also past uh, state of X assessment of the, of the battery. Then our partner, which produces packaging, uh, they are developing a more cost-efficient and safer packaging for uh, either reused or damaged batteries. And on the recycling side, uh, we are making a demonstrator of a robot which will be dismantling the batteries. You probably have seen some of these robots already working or uh, some pilots, but there are still many challenges to overcome here. So we want to focus on this that as well. While on the repurposing side, uh, we are trying to understand better uh, what specific applications the battery at their end of first life can be used for. So for that, some of our partners, including a repurposer, uh, we are developing some algorithms for assessment of the end of first life batteries so that we can choose the, make the right decision. And um, as you know, all these processes are somehow connected. So there are more two more cross-cutting topics. One of them is the battery uh, passport development. We want to also help the European uh, research to um, develop a pilot at the end of life for the battery passport that will help to connect these, all these dots. And uh, this will be combined with a digital twin of uh, the logistics process to improve these processes. Okay, so that's that's it about the project, but uh, you came here to understand who is who in the reverse logistics of EV batteries. And um, you may see that there are quite many actors involved um, and we're thinking what's the best way to actually discuss them because talking about them one at a time maybe uh, would take forever. So instead, uh, we thought that we will explain it based on uh, several steps in the chain. So we will actually invite you now to a um, short uh, journey through the reverse logistics processes. 
And uh, during this journey, hopefully you will understand better what are the roles of various stakeholders. Um, first of all, in the primary, uh, the primary raw materials supplier, so basically the mining industry, they, um, they have to provide us with, with the materials, uh, which is then refined into mainly cathode active materials and anode active materials. These materials in the form of, of powders, then they are uh, transported to the battery manufacturer. Uh, let's say it's a battery gigafactory where several steps are done uh, together. So starting with coating of the cathodes and anodes, and then uh, all the way to the in integration of the cells. These are all the processes that happen at the battery OEM. Once battery OEM finishes its work, uh, then these batteries are uh, transported to the EV OEM, where they are integrated in modules and packs. And this is the production phase. Uh, you may come from uh, the production industry, so it, for you, it's, uh, it's very simpli a simplified picture. However, for us, um, we are focusing on the end of life. So later on, you can maybe make some uh, comments on, on uh, these more downstream processes. But um, it's, it's a production phase, uh, though there, are, uh, there is some reverse logistics going on here as well. Um, there are some batteries that can be used for second life. Um, of the EV OEM, because the the batteries that are used in the pro um, research and development of the cars, and uh, during quality assurance, there are some batteries that cannot be used in the production cars, and these are the cars that sometimes end up at the repurposer because they can be still used in stationary storage. That's one stream, and another one is uh, the, the stream of batteries, the flow of batteries, which can only be recycled. And these batteries can come from both the EV OEM and the battery OEM as a production scrap. In this case, uh, these batteries are collected and uh, they are sent to the pretreatment plant, which uh, mechanically uh, dismantles the battery and shreds them. And um, this shredded mass is called uh, the black mass. It's a mass of um, these active materials of the battery, which is later transported to meta material refinery. And this material refinery can, again, um, produce a, um, a material which can be used by the um, supplier of active materials which is an alternative to the primary raw material supplier. So that's the picture of the production phase. Um, and now we will move on to the use phase. Uh, we are doing the same uh, parts of the production, but then let's say that the battery uh, is uh, successful in getting into the, the car. Uh, then the first owner of the car is um, in the use phase. And in some cases, if the battery is not working properly um, the, uh, or it naturally degrades, the first EV owner can um, refurbish the battery or replace it. So there are uh, there is this new um, stakeholder here, refurbisher. Quite often it's an independent, uh, it's an independent car workshop or a workshop uh, authorized by the OEM that can do repairs of the battery, uh, that can also extract the battery and sometimes uh, even replace some modules uh, or cells of the battery. Um, another thing that can happen to the battery from the use phase is that um, the car where it's placed can be basically uh, sold to another owner. And this is uh, something that I feel is not enough uh, discussed uh, currently because people think, okay, um, the battery always finishes its life uh, when it's replaced, but actually many times, uh, just like with combustion uh, cars, uh, the battery 
uh, will just follow uh, the lifetime of the car and in the end end up in the car dismantling uh, facility. So at the car dismantling facility, uh, the, uh, the dismantlers will have to extract the battery and um, prepare it for transportation to uh, the next uh, to the next um, goal. And this is the view of the use phase. And let's keep several of these stakeholders still on the slide, because now um, we can explain what happens when the battery is assessed and it has to be recycled. So from both the refurbisher and the car dismantling network, the battery uh, can be sent to a pretreatment plant. In this process, uh, there are several stakeholders involved. First, um, a packaging OEM has to develop proper packaging uh, for a specific type of battery. Uh, there are different packaging types for uh, new batteries, for used batteries or um, not critically damaged batteries, and also uh, the packaging for so-called red batteries, which is uh, the most critically damaged battery, which needs all these huge steel boxes to be transported. Um, then um, usually the producer of the battery has to contract a third party logistics operator to transport the battery or a battery collection scheme. So the responsibility of, um, of handling the battery lays with uh, the uh, battery producer. And um, this responsibility can be uh, arranged either uh, through their own actions of the producer or through these battery recollection schemes. So the producer, which is, for example, the, the EV OEM, they uh, pay this battery collection scheme to arrange all this uh, work that has to be done to transport the battery to the pretreatment plant. I already briefly mentioned what's happening in the pretreatment plant. Uh, there, the battery has to be uh, dismantled, um, usually manually, then uh, discharged. Um, sometimes the battery is discharged first as a pack, and then uh, the modules are taken from the battery pack and discharged to um, zero volts so that you can safely uh, shred them. You put them in the shredder, and then after shredding, um, the battery as the black mass can be sent to a material refinery. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but right now, most of this black mass is transported to Asia, because even though we have many investments in Europe for hydrometallurgical recycling, which is this material refin refinement, then um, there are very few hydromet facilities in Europe for now. So most of the pretreatment pre plants, they are sending it overseas to, uh, to China mostly. And then in some cases, uh, these uh, recycled uh, contents, so the secondary raw materials can even come back to Europe uh, to be used in new batteries. Now, um, the battery can be recycled, but in some cases, if the state of health is good enough, for example, above 70, 80%, um, the refurbishers or the car dismantling networks may decide that um, this battery does, doesn't have to be recycled yet, but it can be um, reused. And there is another actor, a, a repurposer, these are companies that integrate second life solutions. Um, and uh, these solutions are um, a stationary storage, are stationary storage systems in most cases. And the repurposer uh, gets these batteries from refurbishers or car dismantling networks or directly from the EV OEMs. Um, there are several actors again involved here, and not only the logistics operator or collection scheme, but also a new type of uh, stakeholder, which is emerging. There are many startups in this field 
called Circular Management uh, Organization, which helps to uh, in the assessment of the batteries, in arranging uh, the business agreements with the repurposers, uh, in finding the right feedstock for, for them and so on. Then uh, there, there are also some data management platforms which help to track the first life usage of the batteries. And based on that, already during the usage phase, propose some strategies for um, um, giving second life to the repurposers. And uh, last but not least, uh, the battery marketplace is uh, there are a few companies in Europe that uh, do these marketplaces where you can submit a battery to be sold. Um, and on the other side, some repurposers or uh, DIY enthusiasts, they can buy these batteries and, and use them. So once a new product is made with these second life batteries, then uh, there is another usage phase. And at the end, the battery has to be uh, recycled. Okay, um, I will just show you this quick summary. Uh, later on, you will you can review it. Uh, but since now we've already used quite a lot of time, uh, I want to quickly show you what we've done so far in the Batteryverse project. We have mapped more than one hundred fifty of these stakeholders. Um, more or less 10 examples of companies for each stakeholder type. Um, and you can already see this result on our, on our website. Um, and now I think um, I will stop sharing this window and share with you our website. Here on the Batteryverse EU website, the website of our project. Can you see my screen, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you go to Insights, you can find the map. Uh, you can choose, you can filter the map by stakeholder type. For example, you want to check some battery OEMs and uh, third party logistics operators. So on this map uh, and on this list, you can see which companies are involved. Uh, you can find uh, their website and uh, location. So if you click on it, it will it will get uh, it will get closer. Uh, you can review uh, this location and um, the neighbors of these stakeholders. And my colleague Rose will now explain a bit more how we're going to develop this uh, stakeholder map and why uh, the community, Batteryverse community is, uh, is important in, in this development. Okay, thanks Piot. Okay, um, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, so Piot gave a very um, extensive explanation of the who's who in battery reverse logistics. And of course we, are very familiar with the stakeholders. And our main idea is to bring the stakeholders in battery reverse logistics together. So we created this community that I'll show you. Um, so first to access the community, you need to go to the battery reverse website first. So www.batteryverse.eu and check the upper right-hand corner. It says community. You just need to click here. It's linked from the website already. Uh, I have not logged in yet. So this is the public view. Um, there are some, some areas, some spaces that can be viewed publicly, but the, the most important sections of this community will be for the members only. So we highly encourage you to sign up to be a member. So some of the public spaces could be share your news. This is um, uh, if you're interested in sharing things about battery re reverse logistics in general, or if you have your own news to share, this is the space to do it. We also have battery reverse insights. These are public. Um, 
these are very important insights. So we interview uh, companies for their insights, and this is very um, valuable, I think. Uh, we also have events uh, where Batteryverse um, will be organizing events, and we will be putting them here. And also, when um, Batteryverse partners are participating in other events, we have some presentations. We will put them here. So now let's go to the uh, members area. So let me sign in first and show you. So Okay, so now we're in the members area. Um, I think that one of the most valuable things about uh, this community is the ability for, for you guys to connect with fellow stakeholders. So um, this is the members section. And if you would like to co connect or engage with other stakeholders, it's as easy as checking um, who they are, going to their profile and clicking message. So then there you are able to message the person um, that you would be interested in connecting with, but make sure that you scroll down because, oops, make sure that you scroll down because from here you cannot see the message part, but here, so, and then, um, so what Piot was saying was that the uh, stakeholder map, uh, he had already shown you the regular version of the stakeholder map, but in this uh, community, we have an exclusive premium version um, for members only of this interactive stakeholder map. So we have a link here. And Piot has shown you that there are many different um, stakeholders that we've ha we have mapped already, but uh, what the premium version can provide is more information about the capacity of Second Life uh, energy storage projects. Like, let's say, for example, if you would like to check a repurposer and, for example, you would like to check batteries, we would have exclusive information here about the installed capacity of Second Life energy storage projects. So this is something that is not easily found online. Um, this is something that we need to research. So we are giving you this information to our members. And we plan to um, put more information for all stakeholder types, all of these stakeholder types. And uh, when we do, we will be sending our members a notification. So one of the interesting things about this stakeholder map is not just that it provides you a way to check uh, for different companies that are on this map, but if they have joined this community, you would be able to connect with them as well through this map. So this could be like a shortcut. Um, so all you need to do is find the company that you're interested in, click, uh, if they have a, a member uh, of their company in this community, we would link their profile here, community member, and all you need to do is click view. And then for example, for batteries, uh, one of their uh, representatives that is on the uh, community is Nuria Gonzalez Garcia. And if you would like to message her for some reason uh, to connect with her, then all you would need to do is click um, message. So we make it uh, easy for uh, stakeholders and community members to connect with each other because this is what we hope um, everybody will do. Uh, yeah, we also have a very interesting um, spaces in this community, such as introduce yourself. Um, if you do join, please do introduce yourself. Maybe people will be interested in what you do and connect with you here. We also have battery assessment. Um, we are planning on populating um, these pages more and more. Battery uh, dismantling and safety, battery passport, second life and recycling. This is a bit... Um, more uh, busier than the others. Um, and we also have regulatory updates, ask me anything. Uh, we recently had a message that got three replies. So what we're trying to build here is a community where people exchange ideas and insights and news and also collaborate in addressing the challenges of battery reverse logistics. So we really hope that um, those who find this interesting and would like to connect with fellow stakeholders, fellow members, 
would join this community. So that's it. Thanks, uh, thanks Rose. And now uh, we wanted to ask you some questions to start off the, the discussion. So um, we prepared two questions on um, Mentimeter. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Um, please uh, join this voting uh, on uh, by uh, going to menti.com and using this uh, code on the slide. I can also, I think, put it in the in the chat. Let me check. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can join the voting uh, on the chat. The, the first question here is just to understand a bit your motivations so and interests, uh, but also what you think are the key bottlenecks in reverse logistics of EV batteries. So is it more uh, about labor-intensive dismantling um, or limited data sharing between stakeholders, expensive transport of damaged batteries, unclear regulations? about the waste product status. Maybe it is um, low harmonizations of state of X assessment, limited as access to battery dismantling manuals, or little incentive for second life versus the recycling. Uh, I, I think each of these topics could be, you know, uh, a topic for a session itself. Um, but maybe there is some trend uh, that will come out of this uh, voting. And we can start off the discussion from from that. F nine votes. Okay, let's wait another fifteen seconds. Yeah, I can see that uh, the most votes um, is for a limited, okay, now we have 12 votes, the limited data sharing between stakeholders. So maybe one of you would like to comment on this. Why do you think it is uh, it is so such a pressing issue and what we should do about this? And when you uh, when you speak up, please also introduce yourself. Who, which company you're representing? So maybe um, I can put in one point forward. So hi, I'm Chetali. Um, I work with Cummins, and I think um, even I chose this option of limited um, data sharing between the stakeholders is because there is really a lack of clarity, you know, between um, up to where the state of charges or state of health of the batteries is and um, what chemistry, you know, it is complying with and what has happened with it before. Like this is the issue even we suffered as an organization. And I, and I feel um, the lack is data privacy. So if that can be worked on, um, then the sharing of the data becomes more easy and cybersecurity, you know, comes into picture uh, with this. So I think it's 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 handholding each other. So this is my reasoning to select that option. Thanks, thanks for this voice. In, indeed, it's uh, it's an issue that uh, is is both an issue for the OEMs and primarily sometimes for the users, because the users uh, at the moment they usually don't have access to the full information about their batteries. So there 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 are some voices, uh, you know, proposing that okay, we should give access to whatever information you need. Um, but the OEMs, of course, they are worried that you would mess the BMS, uh, mess up the BMS, or maybe copy some solutions. So it's quite uh, tricky, but maybe there are some other voices, uh, other perspectives on it from the audience. I can see that there is also um, a topic of uh, labor-intensive dismantling. 
Um, so I'm I'm quite curious if if there is anyone in the audience that uh, has some experience with that, or maybe you're researching on this topic. Could you share your insights? Uh, Piotr and Rose, I had some. Uh, I had a question actually. Yes, go ahead, Ranga. Yeah, so I was thinking of uh, building some sort of a battery asset management company, which would be asset heavy leasing these uh, batteries. So I was thinking of uh, duplicating what. Uh, CATL and NIO are doing in China and uh, Hyundai Glovis is doing in Korea, uh, which would be to put batteries on my books uh, and then kind of own the battery, own the data. Since the batteries on my books, I would also be able to access the data and own the data. And once I own the data, then I can kind of uh, get the state of charge, state of health properly. And then I could sweat the asset out properly in second life in the best format uh, and then finally go for chemical recycling so i would say that owning the battery is a important part of the puzzle so i i just wanted some feedback on that idea thanks uh, thanks ragav uh, very nice idea i i i, uh, I have i have interviewed several uh, companies that follow the similar logics and many of them, they con they validate your assumption that owning the battery is uh, one of the key aspects. So um, there are some companies that they have, they start with having no partnership with any of the OEMs, but uh, they end up proposing some um, propriety solutions to, uh, let's say, collect this data and to work with it. So um, there are some, uh, these data can be, collected from both the EV OEMs uh, through collaborations with EV or battery OEMs or with the repurposers. So uh, there is one repurposer, uh, for example, batteries, uh, AMPS, which um, already because they have produced quite many second life batteries, they can uh, collect also quite a lot of data and then they are able to monetize it in, in various ways. So indeed, uh, I think this is a crucial aspect to either have a collaboration or have access to the battery from the OEM side. Thank you. Thank you for this excellent presentation and very nice color scheme as well, Green. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Raghav. Maybe there are some other questions, other topics you would like to... you would like to uh, discuss just so you know uh, after probably after around one minute the breakout rooms will close we'll go back briefly to the main room but then you can come back and we'll be here so that if you have more questions we can keep the discussion going i had a small question yes Shana. so my name is shauna kasture and i'm currently a master's student at Uppsala University studying master's in battery technology and my doubt was since I'm working on different types of battery chemistry so recycling different type of battery chemistry will require a new set of uh, supply chain issues right because we are working on cathodes and anodes so making active material from that and again recycling in different materials through different supply chains would be an issue so how should we tackle that as moving ahead as we develop new kinds of chemistries it's uh it's a very good question shaunak uh, I, I think i will be cut uh <laughs> yes. in the the reply but then uh, bear with me and i will explain it when we are back sure. uh, 